at the risk of briefly sounding somewhat out of season, many people will tell you that the birthday of the church is Pentecost Sunday, the last day of the 50-day celebration of Easter. However, if you look at church tradition and even decrees and teachings in the Second Vatican Council, it will actually tell you that the church was born from the side of Christ when blood and water flowed from his side after being pierced by the spear. But far be it from me to contradict the teachings and tradition of the church, there is to be noted an existence of a primordial church as early as the very birth of Christ. And we celebrate that primordial church, that earliest indications of the existence of the church in the Holy Family, whose feast we celebrate today, the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And how do we see that as a little church? We see two people, a husband and a wife, carrying out the will of God in their lives with Jesus Christ at the center of their focus and their vocation as parents. That is the earliest form of the church that would eventually be broadened to the apostles and Jesus' disciples, blessed and blessed by the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, but born forth from the sight of Christ as he died on the cross, sacramentally. But we celebrate the earliest form of the church in Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the Holy Family, and the importance of the family in the fabric of not just the church, but society as well. We look at the family as a miniature church. We see an extension of that in the wider context of a parish community. I'm not one who really likes to say a parish family, because it is very much more of a community, but is a wider extension of the smaller church that we find in the home where children first hear that good news of Jesus and begin their training in living a life with Christ as a focus and as a disciple of Jesus. That, too, is also reflective of the wider diocese with its leader of the bishop and the wider church throughout the world, symbolized in Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, in that we say that the wider church continuing the work of Jesus himself. We call it the mystical body of Christ. Christ continues to work and be present in and through the church, which is all disciples, all followers of Christ throughout the world. That becomes the mystical body of Christ continuing his work, but in that we see its model in Mary, the Blessed Mother, the perfection of all discipleship, and we see the patron saint of the church itself, in St. Joseph. Just as St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland, St. George is the patron saint of policemen, we see St. Joseph as the patron saint of the Catholic Church throughout the world. And so it's still, even as it goes out from the family, returns one way or another to that holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But even before that, it was no accident that we have among the fourth of the commandments Honor your father and your mother as the commandment that bridges between the two great commandments of loving God and loving one's neighbor. Honor your father and your mother is that commandment between the two sets of commandments in which in and through the parents we learn to honor God and learn to love our neighbor. Obedience to the parents and honor to the parents reflects an honor that is eventually extended to an ultimate honor to God. And so in God's very forming of the human family, we see the early stages of God forming his people to be his holy people that would bring forth the Messiah and eventually be formed into his holy people that are the church throughout the world. And we see the importance of the family to the church, but also the importance of the family to society as a whole. It is through the family that children learn to be good citizens and faithful sons and daughters of the church. But we see in this day and age many factions in our society that are assaulting the great value of the family. From issues of parental notification laws 
to values that are taught in our schools, contrary values that are emulated in secular atheistic society, which assault our values as followers of Christ in a Judeo-Christian society, we see our values being maintained and preserved to continue to have an evangelical presence when they are taught in the family. And we see many families that definitely take that seriously and really take on that role as mothers and fathers being the primary teachers of their children in ways of the faith, if not in all things. We see some families who certainly take that on as a full-time task. We have families in our midst, in our society, and in our parishes who choose to provide an education for their children at home. They're called homeschoolers, in which the parents just take on that education, take it on as their responsibility to raise their children and to teach their children. We have families who, while they may send their children to a public school, and one can certainly not argue the impact of opposite values of our faith that are oftentimes nowadays emulated in public schools, it is still the family that maintains the values we profess as a people of faith. And I'm very much aware of a number of families, one of which I, I admire greatly. Uh, husband and wife, obviously, a couple of their kids, and their kids go to the public school. And are they concerned with what their kids are learning? Yes, every now and again the kids will come home and talk about these moral values, very contrary to the church, sometimes very anti-Christian values. And it becomes a topic of conversation. And while some people ask the parents, aren't you concerned about what they're learning in secular education? And they say, not at all. We are the primary teachers of our children. And regardless of what they're learning, we are teaching them the values they should learn the values of Catholic people, the values of the followers of Christ. And they become topics of conversation over the dinner table in which the father is actually quite good at making the contrary values look extremely foolish to their children while emulating the values we are called to profess as Catholic people, even though their children go to public school, which nowadays, as we know, can be very secular, very atheistic, and sometimes anti-Christian in the morals and values they teach to the children even if they do give a good education in other subjects. We also have families who entrust their children's education to the church itself, and the Catholic church system in our country is a legacy that Catholics can be proud of. But as I always like to remind parents, whether it's Catholic school or CCD, it could be the best Catholic school in the world. It could be the best CCD program in the world. If they don't get it at home, it's the worst Catholic school in the world and the worst CCD program. Or by contrast, it could be the worst Catholic school in the world and the worst CCD program in the world if they do get those Catholic values at home. It's the best. The home is that foundation where the family fosters the faith, the values, that we profess as a people of God, and it is because of the family that children are raised in that faith to pass it on to their children and to their children. When that is done well, when that is done strongly, then we don't hear instances of families saying, well, when my kid went off to college in three months, he just forsook everything we tried to raise him. Because those roots have been made in the family, by the parents to the children. And so we come on this day to honor that early form of the church, which is the Holy Family. Mary and Joseph focus, focusing on Jesus as the center of their lives as they hear and carry out the will of God, a calling that all of us have in every context in which we find ourselves, but perhaps most importantly, the families in our midst. And so parents need our support and need our prayers. They have a lot stacked against them these days as they raise their children in the faith that we profess. And as I encourage parents to not hold anything back when it comes to raising your children, not just in the practice of the faith, but the substance of it as well, don't let 2,000 years of passing the faith from one generation to the next end with you or your children. But let us continue on a tradition that began, as we hear in our first reading, all the way back to the first person who ever received that revelation from God 
as a part of forming a people. Let us carry out a tradition that started with Abraham, whose son Isaac was that first of a multitude that now is un as uncountable as, as the stars of the sky and the sands on the shore of the sea. Let us pray for those whose vocations are to be mothers and fathers of children as husbands and wives in a family, so that the fruits of that vocation will truly be seen in their children as they carry out the tradition of passing the faith on from one generation to the next, faithfully, strongly, in practice, and in substance, regardless of what any society of any value may throw in their way. And so we come together on this Sunday after Christmas to honor and ask for the intercession of the earliest form of the church. We pray for their intercession and God's blessing in and through their prayers as we honor all families and as we honor the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs>